Hi, I'm Alec from easierhabits.com. This is my wife, Meg. And I thought today we would talk a little bit about uh, social life as a important part of your work-life balance and how that fits into married working life. So um, when we were married, we were in grad school and that was about like the easiest social life ever was because you don't have a lot of time constraints. You have lots of people you know from your class. Uh, in our case, from church, uh, from other areas, so you and everyone around you has lots of time as well. Um, and second to that, it's been pretty easy to have a social life when we're working without kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I, again, I think a lot of our friends came from church, but then we'd still hang out with uh, people at, uh, from my work, for instance, who'd go out to eat on Fridays after work. And, um, you know, it was, it was really easy to have a social life. But once you have kids, that's the tricky part where it is uh, very different to have a social life with kids and it is different if you are a uh, primary provider versus a primary caregiver. And I think some of it too depends on kind of your natural inclination to be more or less social. So me, for example, like I, I'm an introvert, um, although Alec would say, you know, I'm, I'm much more outgoing than I seem uh, or than I feel maybe. But uh, for me, the, you know, it was easy to have a social life before kids, but I also didn't have that huge like drive to have a social life before kids. I had you and then I had like my own free time or whatever. Um, and so for me, it wasn't as big of a need. But once I had kids, all of a sudden I was like, I need people like I need adults. I need somebody that's not like a little baby that's just going to like be really, really cute, but not actually be able to hold a conversation. Right. And so for me, once uh, we had kids, that was when I really felt that need to have the social life. Um, and thankfully, because I am a woman, there are a lot of support groups and various different kinds of like social groups for moms who have little kids. Um, so my first one that I joined up was actually a Japanese mommy group. And it was so much fun. Koma no kai. Um, because I was able to practice my Japanese and... Um, all of us that were in the group had kids that were born the same year. And that was really nice because we were all going through the same things at the same time. And I automatically had this group of friends that knew what I was going through and that we would meet up with on a regular basis. Um, and then I also, you know, had church as well because there were a bunch of people who were all pregnant at the same time as me. So we all just kind of had babies at the same time. And it was really kind of nice um, because then we could get together and our kids could like roll around on the floor and we could talk or we could kid swap, um, which I did a lot. I remember when um, number one was really little, uh, I would kid swap with one of my friends and then we would talk before and afterwards. So so for me, social life actually kind of got easier um, once we had kids. And that's the difference I noticed between uh, being a caregiver and being a provider. Uh, being a caregiver, having been a primary caregiver for a period of time is very hard. It's emotionally draining, it's taxing. I feel like it's a much greater responsibility than working. Um, and so I'm not by any means saying it's easier, but one difference between uh, working, especially in an office, and um, being a primary caregiver is that when you're working in the office, you have like a few breaks where you might talk about um, certain subjects. A lot of times at work, especially with an HR department, um, there are some taboo subjects. And so like one, even then it's like the, there are limits to like, you know, are you going to talk politics, for example? <laughs> um, and a lot of people like to avoid that. I've actually been, um, warned once for talking politics at work with somebody else who also likes talking politics and did not complain, but somebody else felt offended at our conversation. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And it was like, it felt uncomfortable. And so... Like, okay, we'll just, you know, keep it on the down low um, or, or, you know, whatever. Be careful which company we talk politics in, right? So, so like, the social life is very constrained in, at work. And then unless everyone at work has kids um, or you're really tied into a mommy or daddy group at work, um, then a lot of the after work activities are going to be kind of kid free activities. And so uh, when you're a primary caregiver, you have a lot of flexibility of, of what you do while watching kids. They are going to make uh, demands on your time, but they aren't going to demand every minute. So um, you have flexibility to try and do some chores or try and meet up with somebody 
while you are um, watching your kid. And in some ways that makes it easier, right? When your kids start to get enough, like old enough to play with other kids, then that actually makes your life easier. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Whereas if you are a primary provider and you want to do some social life, you have to do that on top of your work and on top of your kids, right? Like in the 1950s, it might be like typical for dad to work all day and then just like go hit the bowling alley in the evening with friends, but like, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember, I, I remember uh, like uh, someone, a, a teacher I had that was like the, the boomer generation kind of remarking that his father wasn't like unloving, but he was kind of more distance, less, inv less involved with the kids. Um, and so, you know, for primary caregivers, you kind of have this model of you got, you got to work, then you've got to, if you want to spend time with your kids, you, you got to do that. And then, you know, depending on your family, it's eight or nine before you have any time to yourself on the weekdays, um, you know, where you'd potentially go out and, um, and then, yeah, on the weekends, you know, again, like time is a little bit shorter versus, um, if you are, if you have very young kids who aren't even in school yet, you have like all day to be flexible with, and there will be demands on your time throughout the day. It's not saying you're not doing anything, but like you have potentially a, a, all day to uh, arrange social gatherings. Well, and one thing I noticed too is that I would sometimes do like, you know, park dates and play mm -hmm. dates and things like that with my mommy friends. Um, and because we'd had the kids like all day long, we could then pass our children to <laughs> their fathers. Um, in the evenings, once yeah. you like when you got home, I would be like, "Here you go. Here's our kids." And then I could go out and have like a social life, you know, with with me and my friends. Like, mm -hmm. didn't do that all that often. Although I do have friends who did, you know, like regular weekly wine nights and things. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's it's hard. Like I could see yeah. kind of the the social strain on you and how much harder it was for you to make friends. And you know, since we've come out here to Austin as well. Um, we, you know, I, I've been able to make friends at like the gym and, mm -hmm. and other places, um, with, you know, with kids and things like that, but it's been harder for you because we have so little contact with other people. Yeah. Some of that's COVID. It's true. A lot happen. of that's COVID. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there, there is a different way in which we react. Like you, you might say, you know, I've had the kids all day, you take them and then I'm going to have a night out and I wouldn't object to that, oh, yeah. but just as you said that, I was thinking, I wouldn't come home from work all day and say, I've been working all day, now you work. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> right? Um, and so, like, there there are, whoever is the caretaker in yeah. the the uh, family, I mean, I absolutely um, adore coming home and having time with the kids. I, I really value that, and I try not to schedule anything during the dinner time, and, um, you know, and, and during make sure I'm available for parts of bedtime, etc., so, um, so yeah, so you have to figure out how to fit that in. Yeah. And that has been different. Uh, when I was a primary caregiver, it was in the mountains of Japan. So I didn't really have a social life there either. No. And I'm kind of an introvert. I've been more extroverted, more introverted. I've noticed actually that my circumstances do affect that. And so in the remote mountains of Japan, I kind of became more introverted because I, there weren't a lot of people to talk to generally. And even of the Japanese people, my Japanese wasn't very good. Um, so we did hang out occasionally with the school and mm -hmm. do game nights with teachers there, which was fun. Um, and then when a lot of the teachers moved on, there was like, I, I mean, there, it wasn't really like full-time positions where people stayed for a long yeah. time. Um, so eventually I did like virtual game nights and found game groups online. Um, and so one of the things that I know, I noticed is like a takeaway being, um, either being a primary provider or being a caregiver. Um, in an area where there isn't a lot of opportunity for social life is you have to tap into some network, whatever network you have, whether it's a school, whether it's finding one online, that has been helpful. Uh, for COVID, that has been helpful as well. Oh, yeah. um, I've tapped into a little bit, uh, for a while, like church was, there, you know, was completely not in person. Now that it is more in person and I'm meeting a few more people, I find that that's a, that's a network where I can go out to lunch occasionally with someone um, and there's starting to be more social interaction, but I also have an online game group. Um, and then I try and reach out and call friends. Um, but, um, but yeah, th those networks outside of work are very helpful, uh, especially if you're in a work situation with COVID where everyone's working from home. 
or um, you're in a work situation where other people don't have kids, so they just don't have the same time constraints. Yeah, but it requires a lot of proactivity on your part. And I think that's one of the things that just like recognizing that social life, you know, for a lot of people is necessary. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I know I need people, even though I'm an introvert. Um, but then, you know, knowing that it's not just going to happen, mm -hmm. that you have to, you know, have those discussions like, hey, I need more social time, you know, so like if you needed to go out in the evenings or something like that, I could take the yeah. boys, you know, for an evening and be like, oh, go hang out with friends, go yeah. have a game night. Like, I, I totally support that. Yeah. Um, and I know you would do the same for me. Mm -hmm. So, so just being proactive, having those conversations about kind of what our needs are, um, and then finding those networks, I think is, yeah. is important. And I think it's different for men versus women. Yeah. Because there are a lot more women support groups, mommy groups. It's just easier. Um, yeah. There's so many women's groups in this area just on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there's yeah. like one for all of Austin for the dads. And there's like three just in the little area we are for moms. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot more choice. I mean, I admit, I joined the dads group for a little while to see what that was like. And I have a hard time... Um, interacting with it like social groups online it yeah. just isn't it's also not my thing i don't um i don't ask for dad advice as much from like i'll you know for my close friends maybe and and we talk about things but like i don't go to a social group to uh commiserate with my dad to challenge i don't know if that's like being male i don't know if that's like socialization uh but there's a difference there um in terms of um that like even 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 with the groups that there are i can't really complain because i don't feel highly motivated to connect with people on facebook or other social media um in a social sense um yeah. and for me it's more about um you know i'll call my friends up and talk talk politics um, <laughs> or talk literature or or um work and stuff like that um or you know i start game groups um here and yeah, that's kind of yeah. kind of what I do. I don't I don't commiserate about kids as much, uh, even when I'm taking care of them. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, there's there's some differences. Yeah. Uh, but I think in addition to um, highlighting that uh, for uh, for augmenting your social life, thinking about like a network where you're going to have a lot of people with uh, a common interests. Um, the other thing is pretty much what you said, which is. Uh, be a little bit more aware of it, and if your if your partner doesn't feel like they're having a lot of social time, you can actually proactively offer like, "Hey, I'll take you know, I'll take the kids this night. You know, don't worry about bath time. Mm -hmm. You know, kiss them good night before you go. But then like go out, and have fun with friends. Um, you know, and doing that for each other is a great way to facilitate uh, some some social interaction and fit that piece of your life in with. The marriage piece, date nights, yeah, um, which are also very important right? with, um, you know, with the business, with uh, your own personal development. Um, so that's that's one piece that can be hard to fit in, especially if you have kids. Um, but uh, let us know what you do to uh, augment your social life or how you manage to balance your social life with marriage, career and personal time. And uh, if this video has been helpful for you, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons. You can get our latest videos. Uh, let us know if there are other subjects you'd like, like us to cover in work-life balance or lifestyle design. And until next week, make big changes one small habit at a time.